Hey guys, it's Chris with City Girl Homestead. Time for Fun Friday. So my son, I was asking him any ideas that he had to make for lunch, for his dinner this weekend. And he's like, well, they make these really good burritos at the gas station. I couldn't really find the um, recipe for it. And he goes, they make a killer pizza. And I'm like, okay. So I looked at what was on it. And I decided I'm going to do a pizza for him. I decided to do two. So hopefully I got enough stuff for both. Because it came with two crusts and no way to reseal it. So, yeah. So I am going to create my own breakfast pizza. So I took a box of that um, Hungry Jack that I got at the Dollar Tree a couple weeks ago. And yes, I used hot water this time and it boy, it worked a lot better. <laughs> so I'm going to put that in there and I'm going to salt and pepper them. I think he's going to like mom's pizza better, but you know, who am I to say? Who knows? Maybe he won't. But I can almost bet he will. And now he's going to get two instead of one because I don't know how else I would, you know what I mean, like seal it back up without it growing really hard. So, he says, well mom, it has like this um, cheese on it. It's like a liquid cheese, too. Okay, so mom's got that under control, too. Because remember, I can my own cheese. And he goes, it's like a cheese sauce. And I go, that's okay. I got that, too. So I am going to first, let me grab a different spoon here. So I can dip into it. Stir it up a little bit. And this is cheese sauce. I recan it. Some of them I make plain cheese. Some I make into um, queso. So it is in fact the cheese sauce. And I'm going to spread that all over the bottom. Maybe I'll like it so much I won't give it to him. Look. <laughs> I won't do that. I get so excited to make anything for my kids because, you know, I know people go, well, you, they could take care of themselves. They can, of course they can. But it really does do my heart some good to actually feed my kids. Like today I took that potato salad over and dropped it off in Bobby's um, refrigerator. It was so funny because I go, are you going to be there? And he says... Probably not after I drop the kids off. He goes, I'm just going to drive to work. And I'm like, okay. And um, so I says, well, then there'll be a surprise in your refrigerator when you get home. And AJ was in the car and he goes, is it kid friendly? <laughs> I said, sure, if your dad wants to share, it is. <laughs> so, yeah, if your dad wants to share, it's friendly. Now, I want to get these toasted up. I want them to be crispy on the um, pizza. So they're going to cook for a minute here. So what I'm going to do is, before I do that, let me move this pizza here. Put it over there. Because I'm not going to cook it. So, yeah, he'll cook his own. And that way they can have it whenever they want to. But after I get done cooking that, I'm going to do some scrambled eggs on it as well. So we're going to get six eggs all nice and beat it up, <laughs> for lack of better words. I had to get more eggs today, I tell you. Went and ran some errands. I got me a watermelon. I got some blackberries I need to wash and put a container for Tom because I make those up for him for his um, lunch. So we're going to get all these beat up good. I put them either with his um, yogurt or with cottage cheese. He loves both, actually. And... 
makes for a lot more nutritious breakfast. Or snack, I should say, is what he uses for it. Good, we'll get all those done up. So that's done. So now, while this is cooking, I'm only going to give you a few, and then we're going to let this cook, and then I'll come back. But I know you guys like the lists, and I found a list yesterday that is so funny, and I hope that you like it. All right. 21 fun food facts. Did you know that Russia only classed beer as alcohol in 2011? A hard one to wrap your head around. Before 2011, beer and any alcoholic beverage under 10% APV was classified as a soft drink. <laughs> it probably goes without saying this couldn't go on forever and Russia introduced less legislation to control the limit of sale of beer to combat the issues of underage drinking and health. Well, hello. What did they think was going to happen? <laughs> this one was funny. The most stolen food in the world is cheese. <laughs> Definitely one of the most surprising facts in the series. The most stolen food in the world is, in fact, cheese. About 4% of all cheese made in the world gets stolen. There's even a black market for stolen cheese, but we didn't tell you that. <laughs> Who would picture, right? <coughs> Bananas are berries, but strawberries aren't. Bet you didn't know this one. The fact tends that only only be known as botanists who apparently get their kicks from misleading the public. Bananas, cucumbers, kiwis are all classed as berries. A banana, that's funny. Um, strawberries, blackberries, raspberries are not. How does that make any sense? And now you will question everything you thought you ever knew. I know, right? Let me stir this again. Oh, they're getting browned up nicely. I love it. All right. Lobsters and oysters used to be working class food. Well, I can tell you it ain't now. <laughs> I went to the store and they had um, shrimp for three ninety nine a pound. So I got two pounds because Tom said he would make that for me for my birth for Mother's Day. And I looked at crab leg, and it wasn't so bad. It was $7.99. I didn't get it. But then they had the monster crab leg. It was $128 for a small bag. So it's not working class anymore. But such a crazy nature of life. The foods that people paid pay hand over fist for in restaurants used to be considered barely worth worthy of human consumption. <laughs> Lobsters are quite literally sea insects, and they were hard sale back in the day. They used to be chucked back into the sea or given to the servants. These used to be the, There used to be a law on how much lobster you could serve a prisoner as too much was considered to be cruel. <laughs> how things have changed. Oh my gosh. I've eaten prison food because I worked in a prison and actually our prison had really good food. But let me tell you something. I think they'd rather have lobster or... <laughs> Oysters. Number five, you can hear rhubarb grow. An old method called rhubarb forcing involves putting the, your rhubarb in a dark shed, tricking it into thinking that it's spring. <laughs> this will cause the rhubarb to grow unnaturally large with unnaturally fast pace, so fast that you can hear the rhubarb popping as it grows. Maybe I need to do that. I'm third year into my rhubarb and still haven't been able to produce anything off of it. All right. Number six, large groups of pistachios can spontaneously combust. The oily, fibrous materials used to transport pistachio nuts can, be, can cause them to break out in flames. Exercise caution whenever you pass a big mound of pistachio nuts. Would you ever think of that? I've seen these and I'm like, they're going to love these. They're going to love these. All right, let's do a couple more and then we'll get these fried up and we'll come back. Fruit stickers are edible. So you know the fruit stickers that are inside of your fruit? They're edible. They're stickers. Stickers shouldn't be edible. Now you don't have to freak out when you take a bite into the sticker. Let us be clear about this fact. Just because the stickers are non-toxic and edible doesn't mean you should eat them. I agree. Healthy foods cost up to 10% more, 10% as much as junk food. 
And you know, when I was talking to that one lady that was kind of mean a couple months ago, you know, she's like, oh, you can eat healthy just as cheap. And I'm like, I don't know what state you live in, but, you know, not here anyway. One of those facts that unfortunately has no upside. Britain is facing an obesity crisis, which has resulted in talks about levies and taxes on junk food. How about making healthy food cheaper than junk food? Either way, if you're wondering why there's obesity crisis, there it is. Number nine. The invention of the sandwich. The sandwich has come to be one of those inventions that shows humans they are smart and savvy species. <laughs> it's one of those foods that you make, um, that you make, you think that you haven't, there been, haven't, they've been doing this since forever. The story behind its invention is as Earl of Sandwich, John Monahue, was on a 24-hour gambling streak. He wanted to eat, but he didn't want to put his cards down and out the sandwich was born. Did Earl make it? Did one of the staff? We will never know. Number 10. You can't overcook mushrooms. And I didn't know this. If you messed up and you for um, the mushrooms for dinner, there's no excuse to hide behind now. The special polymer of the cell walls of mushrooms that ensured tender taste. If you manage to overcook mushrooms, we regret to inform you that you just exceptionally a bad cook. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's 10 of them. I seen that list and I didn't read everything below it, but so I'm reading that with you guys. But I just really thought that those were some really cute things to, to look at. So I'll be back. But I thought those were pretty funny, and there's a few more. So I'll be back. All right, so those are done. I wanted to show you. This is what I do with these blackberries. I wash them and put them in those, and then I freeze them. They had them for 99 cents um, a pint today, so that's why I went and got some. You don't find that too often, that cheap. Like I say, hopefully this is enough to do both pizzas. I hope. If not... I don't know. <laughs> All right, so while that's, while we're doing that, I am going to get these eggs put in there to cook them up. Get them scrambled up. So what I'm going to do is, there's probably got to be a way that's not so hot on my fingers to do that. <laughs> Let's see. Maybe flick it like this a little bit. <laughs> That's awful hot on my fingers. It's not going to be real thick, but that's okay. Because he's going to have plenty of other stuff on it. And if we don't have enough eggs, I can always get more. That's no big deal. We're going to spread this one out too. Well, now they've cooled down a little bit. Maybe do more with my fingers. All right. So we got that done. Get these scrambled up. Hopefully you like this week's video on what I did with my friendship starter. It was pretty good. Alrighty. Eggs are just about done. There we go. Those are done. So let's get us some scrambled eggs on there. I think I'm going to do that with a fork, maybe. Maybe that'll be better. Because <laughs> that's pretty hot. <laughs> yeah, that might work out better. Yeah, they're doing one of those cooking services now, plated or something, so that they can get some ideas for dinners. And, and 
it costs them 110 bucks a week, I think, for five days worth of food. And actually, you know, instead of them going out like they usually do, <laughs> I think it'd be a whole lot cheaper, too. So they're just going to try it for a couple weeks because they got like two weeks free or something for trying it out. I'm like, there's nothing wrong with two weeks worth of free food. Or I think it's like 56 bucks for two weeks or something. So not very much. We did that one time for Tom. And he did them. But he's not much into cooking, so you know how that worked. <laughs> now, he said it also had sausage gravy on it. Boy, I'm running out of space over here. He said it had sausage gravy on it. So you know I have my own home canned sausage gravy. Let's give that a little bit of a stir. Oh, this smells so good. Oh, you can just smell the sausage in it. It smells so yummy. I'll do about a half a jar over here. Half a jar over there. This is going to be delicious. Alright, so now we're going to take a spoon and kind of cover that. So it's going to have everything on it that he said that he thought that was on the pizza. The difference is Mom made it for him, <laughs> and it's probably got more toppings than what they would do. Look at that. Nice. I'm going to put this in the sink. Sorry for the noise, guys. And then, he said it had more cheese. So, we're going to put more cheese on it. We're going to put my yellow cheese on there. I think I'd like this pizza. What do you guys think? Look at that. And then I'm just going to wrap them both in... Um, saran wrap and put them in the refrigerator. They're going to pick up everything tonight after work. Now, I had a couple of pieces of bacon left and I fried it up just for this. So now I'm going to top that with bacon. It just reminds me, Sherry hasn't been, I hope she's okay. I haven't seen her for a couple weeks. I know she wasn't feeling the best, but I hope she's all right. A perfect four pieces of bacon is what it was all together I like when we can incorporate something that we made or you know whatever and use it up that way I did do two packages of bacon but that's in the freezer as whole pieces so there is his pizza I think it's gonna be delightful what do you think? Let me know in the comments what you think, if you think it's going to taste good or not. Yeah, buddy, and I got cheese on that other one. And that leftover cheese, we'll just use it on crackers or something. Okay, so number 11 is black pepper was a luxury in the Middle Ages. Um, pepper is literally everywhere now, but it hasn't always been the case. Granted, living, the past, living past the age of 30 was a luxury, <coughs> excuse me, in the Middle Ages, but so was that the spice that we all use so freely now. It was so expensive, in fact, Portugal's Vasco de Gama, Gama became the first man to sail around Africa to get to India, his mission to look for spices. 
A quarter of the, number 12, a quarter of the world's um, hazelnuts are used in Nutella. You know, I'm not a Nutella fan. My son, Bobby, he loves it, loves it, loves it. You can live on it. Um, Nutella has become such a popular brand that one in four of every hazelnut on this planet makes it into the jars for heavenly good goodness. The demand for hazelnut has grown so much that universities are trying to grow them in labs to fight against global shortages. <laughs> Over Nutella. That's too funny. A corned beef sandwich made it to the voyage to the spa to space in 1965. Astronaut John Young smuggled a corned beef sandwich onto the spacecraft for a six-hour mission. It's a wonder we ever got to the moon. The mission didn't do, or the sandwich didn't do too well in zero gravity conditions, and Young quickly put it back in his pocket after getting out. They could have had grave consequences. Floating crumbs and debris could have caused damage to the shuttle, but luckily they returned to the Earth, and NASA took bold steps to make sure that sandwiches never boldly go where no man's ever been before. I had to stop for a minute. My squirrel was on the fence looking at me like he was starved to death. So I had to go give him some food. <laughs> I've been buying a loaf of bread, one or two loaves of bread a week, for the because now the bread store is up to 50 cents. So it's my guilty pleasure of 50 cents to a dollar to feed the beautiful squirrels. And then the birds now come sit on my fence and look at me and like, hello. But there's plenty of, you know, they can eat the leftovers. All right, so 15. Oh, 14. Loud music makes you drink more and faster. I didn't know that. Never go to a bar with bands, I guess. This was a conclusion from an expert experiment done in France. The reason for the experiment was to see how our surroundings affect our drinking habits and to encourage bar owners to think about the atmosphere at their watering hole could be leading to excessive drinking. So I guess if I owned a bar, I'd have a live band every night. <laughs> Number 15, without flies, there would be no chocolate. I hate flies. <laughs> That's right. Think about the next time you go to swat a fly. Well, actually, there's a certain species of microscopic midge that is essential to the pollination of the cacao plant and makes chocolate possible. Still, we'll never hurt a fly again. Yeah, I will. They're starting, so I have a strip up here in the um, kitchen. I don't deal with them. My son, actually, and his girlfriend now, they both work at a plant that they grow bees, honeybees, and mites. So they work with bugs too. Ugh. Number 16. This one kind of weird. Number 16. McDonald's burgers do not, don't actually rot. You may have known this one already, but it, but it's not as gross as it sounds. The large surface area of McDonald's burgers means that the burger loses its moisture very quickly. Moisture is required to, to grow mold. It is by this method that beef jerky is made. Still disturbing, though. Ugh. So it's like the, what are those one cakes? <laughs> Twinkies will last forever. <laughs> I guess if everything goes bad, SHTF, we go to a McDonald's because we'll be safe to eat the meat. <laughs> anyway, gross. <laughs> 17, the upper class used to s serve surprise pie. Surprises in food tend to be in good combination. We all love being surprised with one of our favorite foods. Are getting a surprise cake on your birthday? But the well-to-do 16th century England had a different idea. Putting live animals... I didn't read this. Putting live animals in your pie. One of those food traditions, they were glad, glad stayed in the 16th century. Could you imagine you put my squirrel in a pie and it jumps out at me? Oh, gross. No. 18. You can make diamonds from peanut butter. You're, actually, you're probably thinking, what's the catch? Well, there's nothing. Major. Simply put, simply put, you have to recreate the conditions of the lower mantle of the earth for weeks to create a two-thirds two millimeter wide diamond. That's only 2,000 degrees, 2,200 degrees centigrade. Our pipe dream of... Um, of a peanut butter diamond in, in Enterprise dis, disappeared as quickly as it manifested. Oh, well. <laughs> hey. Number 19. McNuggets always come in four different shapes. 
We think there's basically no one will know this fact because who takes the time to look at the shape of their nuggets before you scoff them? That is true. They do this so that they can ensure they're all cooked evenly for um, extra dippability. Just keep them coming. I do love McDonald's nuggets. Number 20. The number of hot dogs eaten on the 4th of July could stretch from Washington, D.C. to L.A. five times over. For anyone isn't familiar with the sheer size of the USA, it would take approximately 36 days to walk to Washington, D.C. without stopping. To do it five times would take you a year and a half, again, without stopping. We'll just leave it at that to sink it in. <laughs> so I hope you guys like that list. I thought it was pretty cool. I look for something that's funny, and then, you know, I'll do a serious one another time and whatever. But, yeah, I thought they were pretty cool. So I hope you guys enjoy the, the um, fun Fridays. You know, I don't know how fun it is. I don't know. That's up to you. Um, I'm going to cut up a watermelon now, and then I forgot to get a few things, so Jack and I are going to go to Kroger. I'm going to pack these up, tell my kid, come get your food, taking up room in my refrigerator. Just kidding. Well, I will tell him that, but not quite that mean. <laughs> but I really hope you guys are enjoying the time. I do enjoy sitting here and cooking with you, and and um, most of you appreciate, you know, that I'm doing something for my kid, and... I appreciate that. So you guys have a blessed day. Be a blessing. And I'll be back for supper. We're going to do one of those meals or er, meat, <laughs> canned meats. I can't even talk today. All right. We'll see you in a little bit.